Here's what I know. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He has neither the temperament nor the judgment to be president. And his personal qualities would mean that America would cease to be a shining city on a hill. We're back with Cornell, Matt, and Tim. Matt, I remember when he gave that speech, it was in the sort of thick of the Republican primaries. It was clear where they were heading, but it was March. Um, it wasn't preordained yet. That was Romney's attempt at persuading his old party not to do it, and they did it anyway. Your thoughts today? Well, I would advise anybody that's interested in getting a real look at what's been going on, if they don't believe any of us, read the Atlantic piece, because I think it's so revelatory in what's been going on among the Republican Party and the caucus. I've known Mitt Romney for 20, 20 years. Um, he actually, not many people know this, he actually flew me up to Boston in 2006 or 2007 and asked me to be the strategist on his presidential campaign. I turned him down. I ended up voting for Barack Obama in that. Mitt Romney's a flawed person. I've criticized him. Other people have criticized him in different ways in this. But you can't deny he's a person of character. And when you read that, the struggles he went through while trying to maintain his position in the Senate and opening up the book on what all Republicans are saying behind the scenes, but unwilling to say publicly, and then the, so many of his statements in there are basically saying, how hard is it to tell the truth? Why is it so hard to tell the truth? And that one statement in there, and I'm sure you caught it, when he says, I don't think the majority of the people in the Republican caucus believe in the Constitution anymore. I would just say it's a great example of our democracy, how dependent it is on people of character and people of integrity. Because when you lose people of, when you don't have people of integrity and character, which the Republican caucus doesn't seem to have anymore, then basically democracy begins to falter. And that article lays out how that happens. So here, Cornell, is the quote, quote, a very large portion of my party, he, Romney, told me one day, really does not believe in the Constitution. He'd realized this only recently, he said. We were a few months removed from an attempted coup instigated by Republican leaders. What bothered Romney most about Hawley and his cohort was the oily disingenuousness. They know better, he told me. Josh Hawley is one of the smartest people in the Senate if not the smartest, and Ted Cruz could give him a run for his money. They were too smart, Romney believed, to actually think that Trump had won the 2020 election. Hawley and Cruz were making a calculation, Romney told me, that put politics above the interests of liberal democracy and the Constitution. But as Romney surveyed the crop of Republicans running for Senate in 2022, it was clear that more Hawleys were on their way. Perhaps most disconcerting was J.D. Vance, the Republican candidate in Ohio. I don't know that I can disrespect someone more than J.D. Vance, Romney told me. You know, Nicole, it really is amazing. And when I was reading that piece, I was reflecting back on 2012 when, when I was working for Barack Obama and we were taking on Mitt Romney. And I don't think most of us understood at the time that we were probably engaged in the last classic American campaign. We were probably engaged in the last... Uh, real American campaign where um, facts mattered, mm -hmm. you know, before alternative facts. And although each campaign will try to bend facts to to their liking, uh, we didn't break them and throw them out and throw them out the window. Uh, and and look, I don't agree with Mitt Romney a lot on policy pieces, but that's the point. It was in fact a campaign about ideals and and policies. And to a certain extent, when you see him. Stepping back, it is this is the this is the man who was the standard bearer for the Republican Party less than a decade ago. Right. And how dramatically and how dramatically we've shifted away from this is the guy that we want to represent the Republican Party to this is someone now who probably looks at the looks at polling numbers and looks at sort of his position right now and understands he will probably have a hard time winning a Republican primary in his home state right now because of how dramatically things have shifted. And it's not about integrity anymore because you can you can disagree be on left or right and you still have integrity. But what he's pointing out about JD Vance and Ted Cruz um, is that they don't have integrity. They're making political calculations that they know are wrong.
I mean, I think there's also a piece about the elites that are making fools of the people that vote for them that he's getting at. It's also an extraordinary echo of what President Joe Biden did when he paid tribute to his friend John McCain. We, we just have this in. Um, let, me, let me play this the first time I'm seeing it as well. This is Romney a couple of minutes ago. That a small wing of the party, if you will, I call it the wise wing of the Republican Party. Uh, and I don't believe we're going away. I think ultimately we'll see a resurgence and come back into leadership of the party. Uh, look, uh, my wing of the party talks about policy and about issues that will make a difference to the lives of the American people. The uh, Trump wing of the party uh, talks about resentments of various kind and getting even and, and settling scores and, and revisiting the 2020 election. What are the policies for the future? And my party is only going to be successful getting young people to vote for us if we're talking about the future. And that's not happening so far in that other way. I mean, Matt Dowd grievances is being Utah nice about it. I mean, the Trump wing of the party is totally dependent on lies. The grievances used to be rooted in some kernel of something resembling the truth. They're now outright fabrications about the Biden family, about the border, about the economy, about the 2020 election. Um, it, it, it is the right diagnosis, but perhaps not the most blunt description of it. Well, you know, as I listen to that, I'm reminded, I, I think he's going to go through the five stages of grief. This is my version. And once he gets out of office, he's going to realize what it took, to, I think, Joe Biden about 18 months, because Joe Biden had thought he was still working with a Republican Party that he could be reasonable and rational with. I think what Mitt Romney will realize is this wing of the party thing. There's only one wing. It's a mono wing plane and everybody else is being tossed out without a parachute. That's what's happening in this in the party. I get why he's there in this place. And he's sir. He has been in this party. He has been a servant in the party. He has been serving public service in the party. It takes you a while before you fundamentally realize that no longer exists in Washington, D.C. or around the country, in fact. The fact of the matter is, I think it'll take him some time. Just like, as I say, I think it took Joe Biden, because Joe Biden was dealing with a Republican Party that he thought of that was in the 90s or in the 1980s. But it took him a while before he realized that no longer existed. It really is a such a fundamental indictment of the Republican Party. And I have to say, and I maybe we'll talk about this, it also is an indictment of Mitch McConnell, who seems only interested in process and politics and not integrity or character at all. Um, I agree with that. Um, I want to ask you, Tim Hafey, because I think you worked up close and personal with the last sort of prominent Republican standard bearer to go through the five stages, and that's Liz Cheney. Um, Liz Cheney went through a process. I mean, she voted for Donald Trump in the 2020 election. She saw his conduct after the election leading into um, January 6th and did everything she could to help ultimately elect Democrats. She went out and endorsed Democratic candidates. Um, do you think that she has created a third way, a, a different thing for Republicans to do other than say, I don't see myself in the party by going out and helping to elect Democratic candidates? Oh, I think she, much like uh, Senator Romney, is <clears throat> waiting it out. And, and hoping for a return to the historic roots, policy-based insanity of the Republican Party. And there was one moment during our investigation that was really instructive to me, and that was the day that the Dobbs decision came out. And I believe Ms. Cheney tweeted something, you know, sort of very favorable about the decision. And, and we happened to have a committee meeting that day or the next day, and Jamie Raskin joked with her about, oh, I sort of remember now, you know, we disagree on... Some pretty fundamental things, and and Miss Cheney laughed and said, "Yes, Jamie, I'm a real conservative, but it was good natured, right? It was constructive. It was two people with policy differences that put them aside to work together on democracy, right? That just doesn't happen very much in, in Washington or in this you know, in this country anymore, and it needs to. And people like Senator Romney and Miss Cheney, you know, I, I think pine for those days when we could constructively disagree and get to a better place." Thank you.